thank you so much for joining us in this course. To recap, in week one, we heard from SAP's Chief Design Officer, Sam Yen, about the value of design research. And we also went over the key roles and the design process. In week two, we discussed how to plan and prepare your field visit. In week three, we looked at how to conduct a field visit and capture your findings. In week four, we learned how to share your observations and findings with your team and make sense of all the data you gathered. Then finally, in week five, we looked at how to synthesize your findings by creating personas and point of views. Before we end this course, I want to play an excerpt from a talk given by designer Jason Maiden. Jason is currently a strategic advisor of Mark I and media designer at the Stanford Design School. And previously, he was the global design director for Jordan Brand, a division of Nike. In this talk, Jason does a great job illustrating how design research fits into the bigger picture of the end-to-end -end design process and why it is so important. So I'll give you some tangible examples. So one of the things that we've learned is that culture is about radical collaboration and team formation. And there's no better example than what we're doing at Mark One, a startup that I'm now a part of. So we've created a cup called The Vessel. And I've brought a sample here today. Um, it's almost ready for production. As you can see, I've hit my goal for the day, so I'm happy that I'm fully hydrated. But the interesting piece about this product is that you have to get all these different disciplines in the room that have never worked together before. We've had people who are optical sensor engineers, people that are EE, ME, algorithm, front end, back end. I mean, it was a tremendous team that went into making this product. But the one thing that they had never done is work together before. So we had to create a culture where these people's their ideas can be heard and the solutions can come to life to help serve the consumer the way we wanted to serve them. So we had to create a new flying formation, a new way of working, a new way of communicating. And this was helpful because we did the same thing at Nike when we organized around the Innovation Kitchen and our Explorer group, which is our R&D and our near-term advanced research department. And what we did is we created this process with phase and gates, something that is very different for design, but it helped us. It gave us guardrails. It allowed us to create it allowed us to stay on task and on target, and more importantly, on budget for all the financial managers in the room. So the first thing we started with was insights, spending time with the people we're designing for. We didn't look at images on the internet. We didn't pretend that we knew them. We went into every single conversation assuming zero, because assumption is death. And that was one of the things that I told the team is do not assume that you have the answer. Be open, be willing to discover what the answer is alongside your colleagues. So in the beginning, there was what we call the triad structure. This is something I brought over from Nike. And the triad structure consisted of a creative person, which is typically regarded as a designer, another creative person with a technical background, which is typically regarded as an engineer or developer, and a marketing person who's also creative but thinking about the consumer and the opportunities. And those three together went out, and they found the insights collectively. And then they split up, and they started to ideate. Marketing thought about how will we deliver this to the marketplace? How will we communicate it? The engineering teams thought about how will we build it? How will we scale this? Design teams thought about how will we package it? How will we simplify this experience to make it meaningful and valuable to the people that would actually use our product? And then from there, once we had our ideas and we went through the tension, you know, we talked, we argued, we discussed, we made up. We went back and we presented a business case. We said, if we do this, this is most likely the tangible outcome. And that's how we aligned our resources, our investment. And then we built our proof of concept, we took it to our investors, we showed them what was going on, and they agreed that what we had was a significant game changer in our product segment that we were creating for. And then we started to do our experience build, the test, the launch, and now we're getting ready to move into the sustain mode. And so it's interesting because when I first started at that company, people thought I was extremely crazy by saying, let me take my back end and front end developers with me to do insights gathering. They were like, they never do that. I'm, that makes no sense to me because at the beginning of a process, everyone is equally valuable. Everyone is creative and everyone can contribute to the outcome that you desire. But you have to shift the way that you think. You have to be open to new learnings in order to get new results. If you're interested in learning more about the basics of design and design research, see the link below this video to our design-led development kit. You can find much more information than we're able to cover in this course. Thanks again for taking part in this course and we look forward to seeing you the next time.